In this video, let's talk about the differences in frames in firearms. Do you like full stainless, full stainless, full stainless? If you're a polymer guy, like a Glock guy, XDM, love them. 5.7, we're going to touch on all these guns. Polymer, right? How about alloy type frames? Super high end alloy aluminum, hmm? like this, like this Smith E Class series. This video is all about the differences in gun frames. Please throw in your input. Welcome to WeaponsEducation.com. We have a lot of firepower on the table right now and a combination of polymer frames, steel frames, and aluminum alloy frames. And I'd like to have a discussion as to comparing these types of frames. Does it, does it alter your decision making when you purchase a firearm? And I'm going to give you my input on all the different types of materials that we're about to speak about. Okay, now we know that Glock is well known for their polymer guns. Uh, H&K invented the polymer gun 12 years prior to Glock, but that's neither here nor there. That's a different story. Let's take a close look at a Glock. This just happens to be a Glock 27. Okay, let's, thank you. Tammy's here. Say hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you. All right, now let's talk about the differences in frame materials and I'm not a scientist, I'm just going to, I did a little bit of research and you know depending on the exact type of polymer we're talking about it's, it's going to have melting points between 600 and 900 degrees on the polymer. Now remember the, the slide is steel so for someone to say that a polymer gun is better than a steel gun and this that and the other, you always got to remember there's both, the steel and polymer in a Glock or any gun, this, this steel Let's just talk about Palmer again. 600 to 900 degrees is the melting point on aluminum alloy frames such as this Kimber, beautiful Raptor. You got a melting point between somewhere between 450 and 1200 degrees and then on steel like this full stainless SIG you get melting points up to 2800 degrees. Alright with that said to keep it simple you might say well, the steel's the way to go. If it, that's it's, you know 2,800 degrees to melt, take a look up. Let's talk about it, please. Thank you. Um, first of all, modern day technology has changed so much in the elements of these firearms and the components of these firearms and the metals and the alloys and the polymer. For instance, the B2 Stealth Bomber, probably the most expensive aircraft in our military, you know, it's not steel of course, it's made of composite materials. Uh, the highest cost bicycles, like what they use like to do the Tour de France, is, uh, it's, it's all carbon fiber type stuff, you know? So the modern day technology, what we can do with, I don't like to use the word plastics, you see this gun here? This is plastic, okay? This is an airsoft gun, BB gun. Okay, I'm comfortable with someone calling this gun plastic because it is, this is, it's, it's plastic. To call this HK, this gorgeous USP Compact 45 ACP, or any HK for that matter, a plastic gun, or even a Glock, a plastic gun is not fair because the polymers of today, the components that we use in these materials, is just so advanced that it equates or equals them to solid steel. Now let's let's kind of talk about that. So you guys got to throw in your comments. Which one do you like better, steel, alloy, aluminum, or polymer? I'm going to tell you there is no answer because let's fast forward 300 years in the future. If you put a Glock out in the desert 
at 130 degrees every day for 300 years. You put a full stainless steel gun out there and you put an alloy gun, where'd that Kimber go? Here it is, out there. You know, what's gonna happen? I think they're all gonna age equally. Um, now steel does rust, so keep that in mind. We know that, steel rust. Is there any steel within the Glock? Yes, we know there's steel within the Glock. Let's talk a little bit more. Um, let's look at each gun. Let's do it that way. Let's look at each gun so I can get your opinion. Let's start with this. Okay, the SIG, please look down here. I want to look at each gun. And then I would like everyone's input as to what type of frame material you prefer. This SIG is full stainless. Everything about it. Okay, now how about this Colt, beautiful Delta Elite. 1984, I purchased this, okay? Almost 30 years ago, it's like the day I purchased it. So I don't wanna hear that steel rust and things like that, because with, with the oils that we have today, you know I like Balistol and things like that, it's not gonna rust if you take care of it. So steel is an excellent choice for a gun, if you can deal with the weight, it's, it's, it's heavier, and also with the maintenance, okay, of steel, because steel requires a little bit more maintenance. Let's take a look up again as I hold up some of these firearms, and for instance, here's a 357 Magnum. I purchased this back in the early 80s, 686. Oh boy, is this gun awesome, gorgeous. I think this 686 from the early 80s is probably premier steel, and I, I know it is, compared to what you buy today from Smith. Not that Smith's bad or anything, but steel is steel is steel, and, it, and it'll last a long time, and I have no issues with rust, and I have no issues with anything or cracks to the frame or anything. Now look at this 357 Magnum compared to this. This is a feather. This is 13 ounces. This is a J-frame 340 CT, I believe, is the model. This is the most expensive J-frame you can buy. 357 Magnum. How do they do it? With some special aluminum alloy that they put some scandium into. So, modern day firearms these types of frames are no slouches. Like I said, the B2 Stealth Bomber is not steel. It's made out of materials like this, for real, with scandium in it. So, you got to really hand it to these composite materials. Um, HK, like I said, invented the polymer frame. This HK and I have a, a number of them. HK happens to be up there with me. And SIG and HK happens to be my, my two favorite manufacturers, I think. That, that changes around here and there, but it's pretty tough to beat the SIG and HKs. Uh, when you have the stippling built in to the frame like this, the way it is, and the contouring of modern day polymer is something they can't do well, I guess they could, but it would take a lot more craftsmanship with steel, okay? For instance, you know, this XDM, look at the contouring of, of the, the grip and the frame. You know, you, you got thumb rest and things like this right here. You know, can they, can they put thumb rest into steel? Yes, it would cost a lot of money, and it would be a lot of workmanship. There's just so much credit that you can give to polymer guns. A lot of credit. How about the FN? The leader right now, I think, in polymer guns, this 5.7, that's just my opinion. You know why? Because to my knowledge, this is the only gun where the complete exterior of the pistol is polymer, including the slide. You know, all the other semi-automatics, the slides are steel. Well, this is steel on the interior and polymer on the exterior. We have to talk about this gun some more. It's really cool. Very light, fully polymer, except for the interior parts, is steel. And then you have a 30-round magazine. Whew. Okay? 
Then we have the beautiful alloy. A lot of the Kimber, Kimbers come in alloy frames. And so you look at the workmanship on top of this, please. Zoom in on that. You, know, you look at this rafter. Look at the top of that slide. So that's what they do. That's steel, of course, the slide. And then if I hold it like this, we can see what they did like this with, with the aluminum frame. It's just, it's just gorgeous. So to sum it up, I don't want to keep the video long. What do you prefer? A full, a full, how about this, Ruger? How about this is, talk about full steel? This is a chunk of steel. It's like four pounds. Oh boy, all these guns are safety checked, obviously. This gun is something else. Yeah, but then again, this 357 Magnum from Smith at 13 ounces is something else also. Nothing to sneeze at. I think, what will last longer? This is a good comparison. This Ruger 454 Casul, full stainless at like 4 pounds, whatever it weighs, I'm not sure. And this 13 ounce Smith J-Frame 357 Magnum. Hmm. I think it's going to, they're both going to outlast our lifetimes and our children's lifetimes. Modern day technology has come a long way. And I'm all over all three of them. So when you go to purchase a firearm, don't say to yourself, well, I just want a steel gun, or I just want a polymer gun, or I just want an aluminum frame, alloy frame gun. Look at the whole package of what you're getting. Look at the internal parts. You know, should it have a steel guide rod or a polymer guide, guide rod? Yeah, I tell you what, my Glocks, all polymer guide rods. No issues. No issues. I know everyone likes to have the steel guide rods and all that. You switch it out. No big deal. No big deal. I think the polymer will, will last just as long as the steel. That's just my two cents. Throw in your two cents. I'm all over all three. I think all three are excellent and these are the three choices we have in frame designs and that's what this video is all about. Anything else I want to talk to you about? Oh, easier to shape. Of course, polymer is easier to shape than steel. I think I mentioned that. Uh, weight, weight's an issue, you know, you know. What is this 1911 way versus, you know, this, this Kimber? You know, yeah, a lot, a lot, maybe half. You know, it's a big difference in weight. So if, if weight's an issue, you know, get the aluminum alloy frame. Get the polymer frame. If you like to feel that big chunky feeling of steel, rock on. It's all good. Us gun enthusiasts, we kind of want to have all three, I would assume. And I like to carry all of it at different times for different reasons. That's the question for tonight. What